So we're nearing the end of the 2010s. We've gone through many fads such as Uggs, <coughs> Tumblr fashion, Harlem Shake, feminist own compilations, and a variety of memes. While many things came out of this turbulent era in American history, the most interesting thing to me is the development of the animation industry. I entered this decade as a kinda chunky nine-year-old child who loved cartoons and thought the world was going to end in 2012, and I'm leaving the decade as a 19-year-old man-child who loves cartoons and thinks the world is going to end any day now. Let's hope I'm lucky and get to stick around for at least six more decades of animated television. For the majority of this decade, these series were aimed at my age group, so I'd say I'm pretty qualified to study the trends of the industry and what shaped where we are now. This video will be a retrospective of sorts on the years 2010 to 2019 in terms of animation. Where we started, and where we are now, and all the twists and turns in between. So without further ado, let's begin. The state of the animation industry going into the 2010s was shaky to say the least. Cartoon Network had made the grand idea of cutting down on the one thing that made them so popular, you know, the cartoons, in favor of what was really popular at the time, live action. Disney Channel had literally zero new cartoons between The Replacements in 2006 and Fish Hooks in 2010. If you wanted to watch cartoons, you had to go to specialized cable channels like Nicktoons, Boomerang, or Disney XD. And even then, the series they were airing on there weren't always of quality. Then, suddenly one day, everything changed. In 2010, this little show called Adventure Time aired, and it exploded. Suddenly, every 2011 hipster girl had a BMO backpack that she had gotten from Hot Topic. In many middle schools and high schools across the country, Adventure Time was a phenomenon that had everyone talking. This was the start of a bold new era for animation. New life had been breathed into Cartoon Network. In the span of one year, six new cartoon series had come to the channel. Adventure Time, Ben 10 Ultimate Alien, Generator Rex, Regular Show, Symbionic Titan, and Robotomy. The ratings for some of these series were phenomenal. By season 3 of Adventure Time, the series was getting about 2-3 to three million viewers on average. Even more experimental and niche series like Symbionic Titan were performing incredibly well, averaging around 1.5 million viewers per episode. Nickelodeon soon put its foot into the ring with its series to the highly acclaimed show Avatar The Last Airbender with The Legend of Korra. The series is actually one of the most successful animated series in the decade, averaging about 3.9 million viewers on average in its first season. Needless to say, 2D animation was far from dead. A common trend in art style was slowly growing, however. The more simplistic style of series like Regular Show and Adventure Time were lasting much longer and were much more popular than that of their complex design counterparts. The edgier writing and storytelling of early 2010's Cartoon Network set the grounds of the next era of modern animation. With the success of animated series at an all-time high, the door was open for even more experimental televised shows. From the years 2013 to 2016, we were experiencing something of a 2D animation renaissance. It was at this time that many series would grow into insane success. Series such as Steven Universe, The Amazing World of Gumball, Rick and Morty, and Gravity Falls were all gaining notable fan bases. It felt as though for the first time in years, 2D animation was being treated like an art form instead of a cheap gimmick that had grown outdated. The sentiment of animation being an art form was most solidified in the series Over the Garden Wall. The series was about 10 episodes long, and one of the most beautiful series to come out of the industry in the decade. Steven Universe also became one of the biggest series on Cartoon Network and pushed for LGBT visibility with its progressive characters and serialized story. Gravity Falls was very similar to Steven Universe in terms of success and reach, but is held above, critically speaking, due to a more streamlined story and consistency. That being said, Teen Titans Go!, a comedy-centric reboot of the Teen Titans series from the mid-2000s, completely dominated the channel due to high viewership and easy-to-produce animation. 
The Cartoon Network renaissance slowly drew to an end, however. This was not due to a lack of talent in the industry or a lack of interest in the art form. Rather, it was due to poor scheduling on the side of the network. Instead of airing a lot of their series on a weekly basis, they instead opted to drop them in bombs, like streaming services would. The only issue is that this would give audiences about an hour of content to sit on for months and months, and nothing more until they decided to do the same thing months later. With the failure of televised series came the birth of success for 2D animation on streaming services. Netflix had slowly been building an arsenal of animation in this time as well, Series like BoJack Horseman, Voltron, and Castlevania were all game changers in terms of storytelling and animation. As of late, animated series for older kids and teens have not been as popular as they were in the past. Instead, adult-oriented series like Bob's Burgers, Big Mouth, and Rick and Morty have all been wildly successful in pop culture. Particularly Rick and Morty. Wubba lubba dub dub. <laughs> This series is literally so reminiscent of Adventure Time's popularity in the early 2010s. It's like inescapable. If you go to your local mall and walk around for a bit, you will definitely see some of the worst Rick and Morty merch, likely not official. The series grew insanely popular due to its edgier sense of humor and characterization. With the conclusion of Adventure Time, it seems as though this remarkable era of animation is drawing to an end. As I stated earlier, this decade has seen animation grow into a cultural phenomenon again and finally receive the recognition it deserved. While it may look as though we are entering another dark age of animation, there is a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Two of the most solid additions to the American animated lineup, OKKO OK and Castlevania, have been produced by Studio Powerhouse, an up-and-coming name in the industry. Their animation has a fluidity and depth exclusive to the art form of 2D animation that not many series seem to take advantage of. Another big step has been taken towards the longevity of the industry, with the commitment made by Netflix. They have a vast array of new animated series coming out in the next few years. I'm, I look forward to the future of animation. We have a lot of new shows coming out that look really promising. Anyways, I'm Hourglass Indigo, and thank you for watching.